We are now going to head to Cloyd East, one of those important constituencies to see how voters are feeling there and who they might vote for in this election. Beautiful countryside, charming market towns and the seaside. This northeast corner of Wales has a lot to offer. The new constituency of Cloyd East is made up of parts of four former constituencies, Cloyd West, the Vale of Cloyd, Cloyd South and Delin. In 2019, voters in all four constituencies elected a Conservative MP. But historically, the majority of this region has been a Labour stronghold. And this time around, it's likely to be a two-horse race between Labour and the Conservatives. Llangollen is a town that relies heavily on tourism. OK, pick your town, no worry. I only started here last year and I think there's a lot less people this year than there was last year, definitely. And what do you put that down to, do you think? Definitely the cost of living, yeah. People haven't got as much money to spend, have they? What would help? Taxes to go down, <laughs> VAT to go down. It'd help everybody out here. There's a lot of shops empty now. That's, you know, that's down to like people not being able to pay the rates and stuff. Tourism is a sort of a microcosm of the wider society. So I think from a political perspective, we're looking for um, that wider societal cost of living agenda because ultimately we're acutely aware that if people haven't got enough money in their pocket, you don't necessarily want to go to a tourist attraction. Our numbers are not back to pre-COVID levels. We're not scared yet, but we're, we, we do need to understand it a lot better. Reform UK candidate Kirsty Wormsley says her party has plans to improve the economy and help businesses like these recover. I think the things that concern people most is the cost of living crisis. People are really feeling the pinch and I think what they're looking for is an alternative political party that can help get the economy boosted, get the economy moving again. And how will reform do that? It's easy to say, it's harder to do. We want to raise the income tax threshold to £20,000, which would actually free 7 million people from paying income tax. Um, so that would make a real difference to the amount of money people have in their pockets that they can spend in these beautiful shops here in Llangollen and across the constituency. Named after St Winifred's Well, still a site of pilgrimage, the market town of Hollywell's more recent past has been one of industry. Hi, now, what are you going to tell us about the miners? They're a grand body of chaps. Now, like many other small towns, its high street is struggling. The wind of Welsh Falls being hit already, we're filling them up now, yeah. But we've had our own business here 24 years, 25 years now, butchering and the deli. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of the shops are struggling in the town because of the footfall and they've still got their big bills to pay like us all haven't they i haven't got much faith in any politicians at all and i think that's it basically i don't think it matters who gets into power but it is as it is and why have you lost faith in the system it seems um because i think that they're putting the wrong people into the job you look at all our past prime ministers, they haven't really done much for the country. So I'm not voting for that reason. And my husband's not voting either. We just got no faith in, in the government at all. The Labour Party's candidate, Becky Gittins, grew up in the area. She's hoping to rebuild voters' faith in their representatives. My period of time speaking to local people and campaigning didn't begin three and a half weeks ago. And um, we've been talking to people across the constituency for 14 months with a recognition that faith in politics at the moment is incredibly low. I feel that I understand now how I might represent an area like this. But the big thing is about being visible and about listening. 
because there isn't one answer. You know, there isn't one situation. There's lots of different communities across Cluid East. They all have different concerns, but they have a lot of shared ones. But it is your job to come up with answers and your party's job to, to solve some of those problems you've been listening to. Yeah. The, the pitch nationally, obviously, for the Labour Party is about growing the economy and tackling the cost of living crisis. But for me locally, I think the one I, I talk about most in relation to issues in North Wales um, is around Great British Energy and, and Labour's Green Prosperity Plan. I'm fed up of hearing North Wales talked about as post-industrial, you know, we had coal, we had, you know, steel. And I think what we need now is to have renewables in North Wales, to have GB Energy, to have those jobs that are crucial to having lower energy bills and tackling the climate crisis. Mould is one of five market towns in this new constituency and it has a thriving high street. Households tend to fare pretty well here traditionally. Unemployment is low in this part of Flintshire, which has access to high quality jobs, particularly in manufacturing. Paul Penlington is Plaid Cymru's candidate. He says his party will prioritise bringing money back into Wales. I generally think Plaid Cymru are the only party that will speak up for Wales in Westminster. The two larger parties have already said they're not going to do anything about funding for Wales. Um, obviously we are seriously underfunded. There's a number of issues we need to look at. We, are, we will be the only party in Westminster fighting for funding for Wales. And what are those issues that are top of your agenda? This constituency, Clwyd East, is, well certainly North East Wales, is possibly the poorest part of the UK. We have 35% child poverty. 22% in-work poverty, 18% pensioner poverty, and nothing is being offered by the, the main parties to address that poverty. One of, our, well, one of my personal aims is to try and alleviate poverty. Plaid Cymru have the policies and the plans to bring funding into Wales, which will then hopefully tackle some of that poverty, some of the issues in the area. What's the answer that Plaid would come up with? Um, well, again, it comes back to fair funding. If, bought, if, we, if, we, if Wales was funded the way it should be, Tens of billions of pounds have come to Wales. We can invest that in industry, invest that in public transport, invest that in education, invest that in eradicating poverty. That obviously would have a great knock-on effect to the economy. Rob Roberts was elected as a Conservative MP for the former constituency of Delhin in 2019. He lost the whip in 2020 after breaching Parliament's sexual misconduct policy and is now running as an independent candidate in Cloyd East. You've not been without your own controversy. What would you say to voters here who may be worried about voting for you? I would say that there's nothing to worry about. If you look at my record and what I've actually done and delivered. So having been an independent for the last three years down in Westminster, um, things like fixing local issues, flooding issues down in Fern and Groyer that have been uh, a problem for two and a half decades that no one's ever combat before. A lot of those hyper-local things um, that people often take for granted is all of the kind of things that I've been working on and will continue to do so. In the north of the constituency lies the coastal town of Pristatin. Dr James Davis is the Conservatives candidate. He was first elected as the MP for the Vale of Cloyd in 2015 and took it again in 2019 after losing the seat to Labour in 2017. The key point is looking forward and seeing who will best deliver for North Wales and I would strongly argue that if you look at the North Wales Conservative MPs that have been in we have uh, really been shouting for the region and have achieved things. You see uh, the pledge to electrify the North Wales main line, a billion pounds. You see the pledge for Wilver to uh, be built in at Anglesey, the investment zone in Flintshire and Wrexham. All of those things are in our manifesto to deliver, along with uh, continued shared prosperity funding. And you look at the Labour manifesto and it's very, uh, very absent from there. But you've had 14 years to deliver those things. Why has it taken you until now to give that commitment? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think you have to remember that actually Conservative MPs in North Wales were elected in 2019 by and large, so uh, there has been a strong Conservative voice for North Wales since that time only. Prior to that, the government of course was dealing with the problems of the day, but it takes local champions to fight for what they need for their region and that's what we've been doing. So I've got a record that I'm proud of and uh, I'm trying to uh, 
speak to people in the areas that are new to me and, and, and communicate to them uh, my work ethic and what I've been trying to do as MP. Time for change is the message from all the political parties here. Pristatin is faring quite well. The high street is full of independent shops. But business owners here say economic stability is the key and the cost of living crisis is still hitting customers in their pockets. We've had so many changes, we've had changes to the bins in Wales, we've had rate changes, um, ongoing things that are still increases in prices of products, of our overheads, so we just need a bit of help to help us keep going at the moment. What's on your mind as you come to put a cross in that box? Cost of living, future of children, um, yeah, I mean everything, everything, nothing works. Absolutely nothing works. What are your priorities? What are you looking for in your new MP? Um, honesty and straightforward. A lot, lot less politicians speak and tell us what's really going on. Um, and uh, yeah, stick with what you say you're going to do. Alec Dornsey is standing for the Liberal Democrats. He says Chloe East has some of the highest rates of child poverty in the UK and his party wants to raise some taxes to help tackle this. If you look at, look at some of the think tanks and people who look at this that say that 70% of people would be better off um, under our tax arrangements, it really is a manifesto for fairness, I think. But your critics would say it's easy to promise the world when you know you're not going to be in power. Yes, that's... That's absolutely true. I mean, the guarantee is that the maximum number of Liberal Democrat MPs that are elected will be raising these issues and saying, come on, we've worked out these plans. Why don't you do this that will help um, child poverty or do this that will help carers? The Nova Nutters meet regularly on Prostatin Seafront and their priorities for their next MP are clear. Cleaner waters is top of my list because I haven't actually been in for, I must, it must be about six weeks and I used to come like sometimes twice a week, every week, right through the winter and I just think it's really sad that it's on our doorstep, it's completely free and we haven't been able to to do it and yeah that's uh, actually saying uh, with, with mental health being high on the agenda yeah. I think it is so important to, to have that as Definitely. an option because it's fabulous for your mental health. Environmental issues like these will be important to the Green Party okay. in this election and their candidate Lee Lavery hopes voters here will be looking at the bigger picture. Well, we're looking at um, decarbonising the energy network by 2030, which is way before the, the current estimates, but we need to do that as quickly as we can to make a real difference. How difficult is it to sell that message on the doorstep when people are going into this election poorer than when they went into the last one? I, I'm ultimately, I think people have got to think of this as an investment. It's an investment in the, in the planet, in individuals, in families, in businesses, in that if we don't do anything about climate change, it will affect us, it will increase prices in the future. The question for all candidates hoping to win votes in Clwyd East is whether they can convince voters that they are the best person to draw Westminster's attention to the issues which matter to them here in North East Wales. Um, I go regularly to volunteer at a food bank um, and, you know, it, it's just, there's lots of all, pe all ages are there, young ladies with, uh, with children and older people and um, I don't think the people in London or Cardiff, I don't think they really know what's going on and how much it does cost for a pint of milk, for example. Tracy, what would your final word be uh, to the candidates standing in this new seat? Have a look around, talk to the people in the street, get a feel for what's actually going on. Listen. Listen, yeah, yes. definitely. Listen to us, definitely. Politically, this area has ebbed and flowed back and forth 
between the two main parties. The 2019 election turned a sea of blue, but Labour will be hoping to turn that tide back on July the 4th. That's a beautiful part of the world. And here is a list of all the candidates standing in the uh, Cloyd East constituency on, of course, July the 4th, when the election will be taking place. And that's it for now. Plenty more on the website. The address, as always, itv.com forward slash Wales. But from all of us here, no stand.